The Seven Star Terror Raid event for Incineral has just went live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we are going to cover all of the raid details as well as the best builds to solo this with in your games. Running from the 6th of September over this weekend until the 9th, we will see the Seven Star Incineral make its debut in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Of course, it will return for a second time out from the 13th until the 15th of September, giving you all two opportunities to get this event in game. Now to access this event, as always, make sure you are connected to the internet and then open your menu and head into your poker portal. Once here, come down to mystery gifts and choose the option to check poker portal news. Once this is finished updating, you should have the terror raid event appearing on your map in game. You'll be able to locate it. It does look like this with the dark terror symbol. And then you can head over to challenge the seven star Incineroar. So as we've mentioned, the Incineroar is running from the 6th until the 8th of September over this first weekend. It will then make its second appearance from the 13th until the 15th. It will be level 100. It does have its hidden ability Intimidate, which lowers your attack stat by one stage. The moves that it does have access to are going to be Flare Blitz, Darkest Lariat, Bulk Up, Iron Head, and additional moves are going to be Snarl, Taunt, and Earthquake. Of course, it has the Mightiest Mog, can never be shiny, and has that Dark Terror typing with a Brave Nature. It can only be caught once per save file. And then if we look down at the raid interactions, on 99% of the raid timer remaining, it uses Snarl. That's pretty much turn zero. On 95% of the time remaining, it uses a Taunt. That can be a little bit distracting in the raid and can complicate things, but we'll get into that in a moment. And then on 90% of the raid timer, it nullifies stat boosts and abilities on our side of the field. And that's the only time that it does that throughout the entire raid. Then the other notable things to mention are going to be on 65% of its HP remaining or 60% of the time remaining. That's when the shield goes up. It reduces Terra Orb charge on 70% of its HP remaining. And then it nullifies its own stat boosts on 55% of the time remaining with it using Earthquake. And then after that 50% of its HP remaining, it uses Earthquake. So that is the interaction if you're wanting to put builds together, put things together in your game to run through this Incineroar. But of course, it does alongside that have a lot of the common items that we get with the 7 star Terror Raid Pokemon. Large candies, XL candies, proteins this time, dark terror shards, TMs, and an ability patch. And of course, again, we are seeing the return of those Herba Mystica drops. You're going to get a 3% chance of any one of these dropping, and you can get multiples of them dropping in any raid that you beat the Incineroar. But like I say, first time out, it is running over this weekend as of recording this video on the 6th of September until the 8th. So the build that we're going to recommend in today's video is going to be Malamar. It is going to be the Dark and Psychic type. It has got the Fighting Terror typing on there, so make sure you do change that. Held item is going to be the Shell Bell for a line of recovery in the raid. Make sure it is level 100 and you do hyper train all of those IVs so they are set to 31. Then the moveset is going to be Skill Swap, Terror Blast, Reflect and Superpower. The ability, the most important thing here is going to be Contrary. Just a quick note on superpower, make sure you do PP max that move so you've got the maximum amount of attacks with superpower. And the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in attack and 252 EVs in defense with an adamant nature. Now, the EVs that you want to put in are going to be 25 protein vitamins and 25 iron vitamins and then put the remaining feathers from the attack and the defense into those stats and the remaining EVs are just going to be put into HP. But that is the EV spread. Should look like this once you've put it together in your game. That is the Malmar. Of course, it will be down in the description below if you want to take a look at it after the video. And we'll jump into the raid now and I'll show you how easy it can be with this Pokemon. So when you first come into the raid against the 7-star Incineroar, turn 0, it's going to drop its Intimidate onto the field. That's its hidden ability. Going to reduce our attack stat by one stage. But because of the contrary ability, that will flip around and actually give us a plus 1 to our attack. So that's pretty welcome. It's going to then follow that up with a Snarl, reducing our special attack by one stage. But again, the contrary ability will kick in and give us a plus one in our special attack. Not really going to play much effect in this raid, but worth noting nonetheless. Now, the next pivotal turn is when the raid timer hits 95%. When it hits that amount, it will launch off a taunt and it can be into any one of the four targets on our side of the field. Now, we're kind of hoping here that it's not into the Malamar. 
and it is not into the hacks race here if it's into the malamar you probably want to just reset the raid come back in and start again because turn one we are locking in with a status move which is skill swap we're essentially giving the incineral the contrary ability we're obtaining intimidate so anytime the incineral does lock in with a bulk up rather than give it a boost in its attack and its defense by one stage actually be reducing its attack and defense by one stage now the next thing is probably the hardest thing and that is getting the incineral to knock us out we're waiting on this turn where 90 percent of the raid timer will nullify stats and abilities on our side of the field uh, but that's not anything that we need to be concerned about other than taking note of that we just lock in with a terror blast this next turn and hope that the incineral has enough in its tank to be able to knock us out that's what we really want because once we are knocked out, our ability is going to be reset. When we come back onto the field, we will have that contrary ability once again, which is going to be the main way for us to beat this incineral pretty quickly. Now, we do lose a bit of the raid timer in the process of doing this, but it's not anything to really worry about because we're going to be able to run through this raid pretty quickly from now on. Now, the incineral has reset our stat drops on our side of the field. It's not going to happen again. We need to lock in with superpower as soon as we come back onto the field. Now the contrary ability is going to activate. That gives us a plus one in our attack and a plus one in our defense, making sure that we are able to take the attacks a little bit better from this incineral. As you can see, we can take that flare blitz pretty well there from the incineral. And if we just check the stats on the incineral here, it's minus two in attack already, minus three in defense. And this will put us up to plus two in our attack and our defense with that contrary ability. The shield hasn't went up yet, of course, the shield does activate on 65% of the HP remaining on the incineral or 60% of the timer remaining on the incineral. But it's pretty easy from here on out with this Malamar because the ability on the incineral has been changed. It is going to just reduce its attack and its defense as it goes forward with those bulk ups. And we're going to be able to utilize the superpowers pretty effectively now and run through the raid. Now, basically, all we're doing is chasing down our terrestrialization using the superpower until we can do that. And then pretty much just running out of superpower if we need to probably won't get to that point if you have pp maxed it but if you do then you can rely on the terror blast to close the raid out but it's very simple it's just that initial setup with the malamar that you need to really watch out for where the taunt comes onto you it will complicate things and that's where you probably want to just reset the raid and come back into it we can't terrestrialize just yet because on 70 percent of the raid timer the incineral does steal some of our terra orb charge meaning we have to take an extra turn to terrestrialize now sometimes you're not going to have to deal with that but a lot of the time you are but one more superpower from ourselves is going to put us in the position where we are going to be able to terrestrialize and once we can we're going to be able to do some really impactful damage to this incineral and as you can see we can terrestrialize now we've still got four superpowers left we can terrestrialize and start doing a lot more damage now that we have got those attack boosts under our belt and we'll be able to run through this raid pretty quickly incinero does nullify the stat drops on its side of the field of course and 55 percent of the raid timer so we've seen that happen so it does negate those defense drops that it has taken but plenty of time for it to get more of those bulk ups off as the raid goes on and the more that we go on with these superpowers we'll just boost our attack continually over and over and over again until we're plus six on our attack and our defense and we're going to be able to run through the incineral like i say pretty quickly after this point it's just that initial setup that you need to rely on but i do think the malamar pretty quick for running through this raid probably one of the better options you now don dozo is another option that's pretty reliable pretty consistent but it is very slow as well and can be tripped up in the same respect as the malamar with that taunt on the very first turn of the raid if you do get taunted with don dozo does slow you down a lot and i just feel like the malamar runs through this a lot quicker it's a lot easier to set up and there's a lot less to kind of think about in the raid once you get past the knockout once you get past the taunt it's pretty easy sailing with the malamar for you to run through the incineral and again because the hibber mystics are being dropped this weekend with this incineral it's a good one to just go through and farm uh with the malamar once you've built it in game and you have a lot of success with it I guess one of the only things that would be a little bit of a detriment to you in this raid is if you take a flare blitz and you get burnt probably going to have to take a turn to use a heal cheer in that situation but otherwise you're going to be having a really easy time once you've got through that initial steps of the battle and you can see the shield broken there one more superpower or terror blast is going to be enough to pick up the knockout and uh, the incineral even with the darkest lariat that ignores any 
kind of defense boosts on our side of the field because of these bulk ups and that contrary ability being such a detriment to it, it just makes it so easy for us to kind of run through and uh, everything going well. We beat it in pretty good time, even though we have been knocked out as well. But you can see how important having that PP Max is on the superpowers. We are using that last one just to clear the raid. So eight superpowers in total is what we've used. And I think one Terra Blast as well. So the Terra Blast is there because we're not doing as much damage early on and we want the incineral to kind of knock us out as quickly as possible after we have used that initial skill swap but there we go that is the incineral reap the rewards and then you can if you want to farm it of course respawn the raid den because you only get one on your map per day and then go and repeat this process and farm over the weekend if you open your map and then hit your home menu then come down to system settings then down to system and then into date and time make sure your synchronized clock for the internet is off Click into date and time, just toggle through the options, then hit your home button and come back into the game. And you'll see all the dens will respawn on your map. And you'll be able to locate the seven star terror raid event den and head over to it and kind of rinse and repeat. If you found today's video useful, please do leave a like and share this video around in the community to help those who might be having a harder time to take this incinero down in game. Of course, as always, leave a comment with whatever build you have found to be effective in this raid. And finally, if you enjoyed this content, consider hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications so you don't miss any future Pokemon content. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Until next time, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.